and the recording works now. Hello! Yay. Hey! <laughs> the year is 2020! <laughs> we have gathered for our first uh, writing corner chat update uh, vlog whatever do that hangout. Of course we have had like three episodes worth of world building discussion already so this I might upload this before I might upload this after but we've decided to give some updates as well mm -hmm. your your camera okay uh, yes indeed welcome to 2020 and uh, I my January, I know it's February now, but my January was filled with working on Split Personality 1, uh, which if any of you are familiar with the ongoing works of Chaos Nova, will know that this has been a project that's basically been in the works since since you came on board, I think, right? I've been rewriting and working on this ever since, uh, because the published version of Split Personality could have been better. There were some story elements that no longer make sense in the current canon of the Chaos Nova universe. So, I sat down, and here's some here's some advice for some authors, if you want it. Uh, what I did... Yeah, look, there it is! The, the original Split Personality! <laughs> and yeah. this, this also shows painfully, obviously, that my camera flips the uh, image for some reason. I can I can read the words perfectly, so mm -hmm. it's actually come up quite nicely for me. Um, but yeah, that was the first ever book that I published within the Chaos Nova universe. I think possibly even my first ever book ever. Uh, Kaylee did the uh, artwork for the front yeah. cover. Thanks for that. Uh, she was I, I have a suggestion. Uh, how mm -hmm. about we talk about more general stuff first? And only then yeah, jump do. into the let me tell you how it's done part. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, do, <laughs> so keep it more general based on split personality? No, I mean, let's just do general updates. So you have been working uh, okay. on split personality. What else? I think uh, uh, I think it's it's been a while since we did one of the writing corner up, uh, updates thingies. I think the last one might have been in October maybe. November, mm. something like that. We don't speak of December because that is where brain goes, to d brains go to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, I, I think I think let's just sort of get uh, eased into the setting and let's imagine that we haven't had uh, an hour worth of world building discussion behind us I, right now. In December, I actually have something to share for December. Uh, I. We are painfully aware of the brain treachery occur in December and the upcoming Christmas storm and New Year, all that craziness. Uh, so instead of forcing myself to write anything, I set a lot of building blocks in place. I put a lot of story notes down, I didn't actually write any physical text. I just made it very easy for me in January uh, to be like, there are some things in place that I can use, and it's going to make the future writing very easy. So, yes, I and use there... the treacherousness against me. And there's a lesson in that. So when, yes. you, when you know your brain won't be working, don't force it to work, but instead uh, do some lighter tasks and shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I think I set it up quite thoroughly. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then I moved into January and split personality and I the the things I did with split personality was I sat down every day like I dedicated unless it was like a weekend when mm -hmm. I was like right we need to take a break from this weekdays I sat my ass down and I wrote and I wrote and I wrote and I wrote and I didn't stop writing until I had done a set amount like I was like mm -hmm. we're going to do half a chapter today if it was if it was a big story block I was like I'm doing half a chapter if it was a small story block I was like we're nailing this in one day um so that yeah, it's split personality. I think during this time you were working on base camps, right? I think so. I don't rem I don't remember December very well because mm. of the little brain death and all that. <laughs> yeah, uh, all the shit going on. But I think I I definitely got some notes down. At that point, mm -hmm. I think I wasn't sure of certain plot points yet. Like I I think I. 
we did have some chat sessions and I think I recited the whole thing to you and clarified it while talking so there was that and uh, there were I think I took some leaps uh, leaps ahead in the story during the uh, writing first these that's the specific uh, writing workshop the, where I go locally with uh, friendly authors and uh, uh, editors of the uh, reactor magazine mm -hmm. so I don't write every day I, I, I should add immediately so I write when I can and uh, basically if I force myself like my brain just doesn't work that way I write when I can as much as I can but uh, if I tried to keep up with any sort of you have to write every day then mm -hmm. uh, I would just uh, smack my head to the wall in frustration because I'm failing at it and I still wouldn't be any closer to finishing any stories so it, it's it's better just to sort of use use what I have etc 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 but yeah the li mm -hmm. library setting kind of kind of works well with the uh, with regular regular uh, brain movement so I think <laughs> I, 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 I think I think mm. I have <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> so I, all the kids in the audience can giggle right now so yeah, I, I, I think I have I have sneakily gotten down more notes than I even realized Guilty yeah so uh, whenever I sit at my uh, at my uh, work desk uh, being the uh, role-playing as an amicable uh, library clerk uh, <laughs> then during the pauses uh, I often uh, add bits and pieces to my current writing projects so I I have gotten some editing done that way uh, and I, I think I've definitely uh, grown the text body uh, that way and uh, even though it seems like it's a really small contribution like oh I've read the sentence here and the half a sentence there and a few keywords here but it sort of adds up so mm -hmm. so there is that oh yes uh, my to be fair, when I say I sat down and thought right, it was to be fair eight years in the making, oh. right? Like, like it's not just like if it's it's now got to the point where if I sat down and and couldn't work on the script personality, mm. then something's wrong. I haven't learned anything, mm. right? There's like if if I haven't got to the point where I can write this thing on from memory now right mm -hmm. I could probably do the damn thing from memory um it, it yeah it was just a case of putting words to paper in that mm. instance um uh, I do not recommend forcing like if you haven't got a story idea and you you force that like it that definitely never works for me especially mm. uh so it like Cal de Vaza, I sat down started writing Cal de Vaza, and the next thing I know, I'm at the end of Cal de Vaza. That wasn't false at all. That was like the most fluid thing ever. And the next mm. thing I know, I'm like, oh, whoa. And then it just sat on the hard drive for two years. <laughs> and then I brought in the editor and uh, we, we we did a thing. We, we did a damn thing, man. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, that, I think, pretty much covers January. Like, January, I got to the end of January, sent out split personality to what I'm going to call my pre-alpha readers. And these are people like Keo and mm. Claire and people like that. Um, so I'm awaiting feedback on some of that. Mm. And then I tried to get into Collision Course. I, I, and this is Project Collision Course is the placeholder name we're currently using for uh, the joint story that myself and Law are embarking on, which is a continuation of the Seeker storyline and will include uh, such memorable characters as Gnarly and uh, Steve <laughs> <laughs> also a placeholder name uh, and 
Yeah, so that's I'm I'm I tried to get into that. I collated all of my notes, and uh, I again some author knowledge from my perspective is I was like ah, and I think I compared it to when you start an RTS like a real time strategy, and you mm. think oh I can do this better, so you start again, <laughs> and then you get through it. And you're like, oh I can do this better, so you start again. Yeah. I was I was looking at collision course with a mind to oh I could rewrite this bit and it'd be better. And I was about to sort of like delete certain chunks of my notes and things like that. But I was like, no, 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 no. You save those notes, you put them to the side, and then you write the new thing out again. And then magically, you've now got two lots of dirty text to draw from <laughs> instead of just the one original sort of uh, first time and yeah. then the few subsequent better times, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm at with Collision Course. And since I didn't want a false collision course, I turned my attention to Mira's Legion mm -hmm. at the start of February. And the story for that is like split personality. I've got that locked in now. Um, they, yeah, that I'll cover that in a later episode later, specifically talking about Mira's Legion uh, once I've got the first draft of that done. Um, and just every now and then when that hasn't been appropriate to work on I've been throwing notes into sort of like the general take and fly it particularly the Nux and Chaos so I, I'm getting to know those two really well now mm -hmm. uh, coming into February I want to I want to well. inter interject the yeah, ex explanation here so Nux and Chaos are like two characters in the Chaos Nova storyline who explicitly mm -hmm. come from Earth so while yep. the while the rest of the Chaos Nova universe mostly takes place in far in the far future, far ish, we're talking about a few thousand years, in a very specific region that is not Earth, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, with multiple star systems and multiple cultures uh, settling those systems, we still have a few holdovers from the original settling expedition who have been uh, kept in stasis and uh, who, who were sort of I, I, I think a good keyword here is stranded or sort of who were left in a sort of state of suspended animation when something mm -hmm. went wrong during the initial colonization and now when this world is living and uh, and and active they get picked up and yep. they are uh, twins, brother and sister, who were part of one of the original Exodus expeditions. Mm -hmm. so and through working on the Nutcow storyline, I came up with the idea for within certain homeworlds, <coughs> uh, within certain areas, there would be a memorial to these to the people that they lost trying to on the first exodus mm -hmm. and uh that was a that was a story point that came out just from working on the characters as opposed to like mm -hmm. doing any sort of world building stuff or anything like that and that actually plays a key part in the story later on uh some stuff happens and nux ends up actually at the memorial looking at the memorial when you see uh his and tanya's names on there tanya is chaos, nux and chaos are sort of like code names, team names uh, sort of like just they're not their real names essentially and they're quite I think when they first get picked up Chaos is sort of the opinion that they shouldn't use their real names because they they don't know what to expect they don't mm -hmm. know who they can trust um, so that's a big aspect but yeah they, they're, I was just working on characters and I was at there, there was a moment I was trying to work out and it was kind of coming together but then not and then I struck on this idea. It's like, oh, maybe this happened, and and they and they would, I feel, give reverence to people who tried to help continue humanity or help continue their sort of peoples into the stars, right? So I think there would be some sort of mm. rev reverence or some at least talk history-wise. Here's the thing, I think mm. uh, I agree that there would be a memorial to the people who. Uh, failed the exodus, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But it would have to be set up by the people 
who were part of the Exodus. Mm, yes. Okay. Be because uh, the, gener the, the, <laughs> the more generations <laughs> you move after that, the less relevant it becomes. But when you reach a new home, then you then the emotions are raw, and you are more likely to remember or or make sure that those are remembered who also try to make the trip and and help you there, uh, and didn't make it. And this this would also give you the historical uh, dimension there. We do actually in the storyline. I am so confused about how uh, Nux because at the end of Taking Flight, uh, we have. I think we're gonna we're gonna do it as an epilogue. Uh, the mm -hmm. the chapter called they they had made it. Mm -hmm. Right, and I think it starts with maybe not even Nux and Chaos. Just uh, they might not even be main characters. They might even be side characters, mm -hmm. as the team is the bigger character, mm -hmm. or the the ship that they're mm -hmm. on, or the the. They might even be in cryo by the time we meet them at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but that is essentially them from Earth, and then the Exodus. So we do get to see bits of it. Mm -hmm. Maybe not solidified chunks but I think doing it as an epilogue because it doesn't fit anywhere else in Taken mm -hmm. yeah so it's it's kind of it's kind of tied to the current stories but it is kind of a separate thing that contextualizes mm -hmm. the bigger stories somewhat yeah and the bigger stories function without that bit but it adds flavor to it basically mm -hmm. absolutely I th I think they I think one of the original writing the they had made it storyline was Nux and Chaos shuffling through a sort of like airport that was that was a spaceport right but it's on the ground so they're sort of like getting shuttles out to the the ships in atmosphere that, and uh, all and yeah like one like... of the gi one of the gimmicks from that was that all the terminals didn't they weren't called like terminal 1 or anything like that they were like the Neil Armstrong terminal mm that sort of thing and it was a, just a total gimmick and I'm not mm. I haven't leveled up enough as an author to write that story <laughs> yet so distinction the they had made it bit is newer mm -hmm. that is that is not the part that you are talking about that was your old storyline yeah, yeah, yeah they they had made it that is uh, that comes from I think from a few years ago when we were trying yeah. to uh, create a stepping stone like a path of stepping stones of smaller stories to lead to the bigger story uh, but uh, the terminals and ports and all that that's the, the, I think that's a previous generation of the stories so yeah. that's that's not the same thing as they had made it they had made it is sort mm -hmm. of the fleet arrives they are not quite there yet but they are close <laughs> so that's mm -hmm. that, that's a little bit different storyline I think so we really need to get together and knuckle down on that. Mm. And I think this might be it, right? This is why I haven't leveled up in this aspect <laughs> enough, is because we're running two conflicting versions of ideas for what this story should be. Uh, and I actually, I want to go with your version more because it's actually the more in line, more in tune with the current canon version. Mm. And to be honest with you, I don't really want to spend that much time on Earth, if any, during nah. the Chaos Nova. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. Earth is not pa part of these stories. It is part of the history's history, sort of. Yeah. But it's but it's not an active part of these stories. Earth, so 2020, man. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> mm. So meanwhile, in January, uh, I was mostly uh, busy with with preparing, helping to prepare the hundredth issue of reactor and we mm. did it we made it it's up Whee! imagine i'm holding flags Whee! so this, flags. this this friday we're also having uh, one of the like presentation about it in the local uh, writers hub uh, but yeah if usually we have like uh around uh, 20 entries or 20 posts in one issue sometimes less sometimes more 
then this time we had almost 30. Nice! And, uh, it's gonna be a thick episode. Think, yeah. I don't even remember which ones I helped you edit, but it was more than one. Hmm. Oh, I still have one uh, active story in the works. I mean, in, in the editing works that I'm like over half of it, but uh, I need to pick it up again. But yeah, mm -hmm. the, once uh, once the hundredth issue was out, then I hit a like hit the mother load of all the busy. So <laughs> uh, I have been writing like a little bit here and there, mm -hmm. but uh, all the other tasks have been kind of dominant. So there is that. And now, Nux has some ideas to share with the fe fellow writers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, oh, going back to like... split personality, right? The lessons I learned in split personality. It was just basically the sit down and, and write. And I think maybe the lesson I learned from that was get into a rhythm of mm. writing. Um, the lesson was that even if you don't write, at least sit at your computer and and try to input notes. Mm. Uh, like get, get your brain into the way of thinking that, okay, we're sat at the computer, we usually write when we're at the computer, so let's mm. write. And I think that, <laughs> that's, that's, that's helped me a lot. Um, it has also, though, led to some kind of sleepless nights where I've, woke, well, I've been trying to sleep and I've actually figured out a ton of stuff in my head mm. and I'm like, well, I'm not going to remember all this in the morning so I need to write it all down now yep. and I'll be up until like four o'clock in the morning sitting in bed like and tapping <laughs> away. And, uh, yeah, so I have had some sleepless nights thanks to my desire to write but I mean, at the end of the day it's all going to be material and once the Chaos Nova project is finished then I can take a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> take the rest of the week off. Yeah, I can't quite see the board, but I think 2028 is where I plan on working on Deja Vu, so we'll see! <laughs> <laughs> and Deja Vu is not even the end, so there you go. Yeah, Deja Vu is like this, uh, the beginning of the next stage, sort of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh god, what have we done? What, what have we done, Law? What have we created? <laughs> we were s what's that line from Jurassic Park? We were so concerned with whether we could that we didn't stop and ask ourselves if we should. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is where we're at. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, any other big things that we need to share with the world? Not really. I just I want to sort of make it official that Split Personality 1 will be coming out this year. Uh -huh. Right. Right. I want it to, I want it down on paper. I want it on the freaking record <laughs> that that's a thing that's going to happen. And hopefully also Mirror's Legion. And then 2021 is the taking flight forging destiny plan. Mm. So, we'll see. And also during 2020 I want to see if we can really nail down on collision course at some point. Yeah, I think, uh, I w uh, speaking of goals, so last autumn, last summer and autumn, uh, we did a shit ton of plotting and outlining for the collision course, mm -hmm. and we sort of reached to a point where the characters have, uh, we basically, we, we concluded one smaller arc within the bigger story, so... Uh, this is where we have uh, not stopped, but this is this is where we we have paused the outlining so far, mm -hmm. and we need to catch up with the text creation now. And I would say that uh, in 2020, I would like to uh, get the text part into such a stage that we can share. Uh, excerpts and outtakes in the forum. Mm. Like, uh, I wouldn't go as far, like, it, it's a pretty big story. Uh, I wouldn't go as far as uh, saying that we we will get publishable material. 
but mm. uh, we can get like uh, uh, stuff that we can uh, show for free on the forum and and maybe even uh, read out some snippets as we as we did some years before and so on yeah I feel this is part of our strategy, right? Mm -hmm. I'm currently working on the solo projects, which I fully intend to release, and that sort of mm -hmm. keeps, I hope, people interested in Chaos Nova. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we are sharing elements of our works in progress, mm -hmm. and that also should hopefully keep people sort of tuned in and like, oh man, this is kind of interesting. I want to follow where this goes. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the strategy of providing material, trying to keep a semi-constant stream of material mm -hmm. um, I'm not I'm not going to be like oh we're going to release two or three books a year because I, I yeah. already can tell you that's not that's not a promise I can keep to right Yeah. as much as I'd love to and I'd love to share that many stories a year maybe even what I can't promise and, and, and keep that promise mm -hmm. so I think the like occasional release of books and also occasional release of excerpts and read and stuff like mm -hmm. that like if me and you sit in front of a camera and read out maybe like half a chapter or whatever that's great I'm fully there for that mm -hmm. um, I think that is a good strategy moving forward mm -hmm. and also um, just this completely uh, slipped my mind Cowed Vaza is going to be featured in Parallel Worlds magazine which is like an official legit magazine um, so if you can pick up a copy of Parallel Worlds episode 7 I mean pick up as many copies of any episode of Parallel Worlds that you want uh, but I think particularly number 7 is where we're going to be at and uh, they, I don't want to spoil anything but they seem enthusiastic so uh, look forward to that uh, so that's the other thing I'm going to do is I'm also going to keep uh, sending copies to magazines and I'm going to keep uh, maybe even get involved in a couple of competitions and stuff like that. Yeah, man! Yeah! <laughs> Shout out to Lee Hall for the quote. Thank you very much for that, sir. He's got some books out as well. Uh, uh, yes, I don't have any to hand, but check out Lee Hall Writer on Twitter. Yeah. He's cool. He's um, on, on Twitter. So yeah, that is... He's on Twitter, he runs a blog, and uh, he's on Goodreads as well. Mm. And, and he, many and thanks. he's uh, very happy to share other indie writers. So if you want to discover more indie writers, uh, his blog is a good place to start. Yeah, man, he's an indie writer champion. We love Lee. <laughs> he's cool. Um, yeah. So, um, oh, what was the final thing I was going to say? Yeah, is the Parallel Worlds magazine episode seven? Caldervals is going to be in it, um, and I think that's the other thing I want to keep doing is. We've, got, I think, we've got the story thing down pat now, right? I think mm -hmm. we've got how the process works, and it's just a case of of working it, mm -hmm. getting feedback, mm -hmm. applying feedback, mm -hmm. and and because we we know our covers work now, we've got people on Fiverr that we can apply our our questions to, and they'll be like, yeah, we can make you a cover, sweet. So we know how that element works now. Um, we're getting a better handle on the story side of things so also I think it's time to start branching out into magazines and social media and stuff like mm -hmm. that properly mm -hmm. like getting in touch with like legit organisations and stuff like that and being like hey here's our work check this stuff out man you might enjoy it yep. and in the case of Parallel Worlds apparently they did so I'm yeah <laughs> we'll see yeah. Uh, meanwhile uh, I have a big solo goal and that is to complete uh, the second part or the continuation of the Estonian Chaos Nova story it's always warm in base camp and uh, right now uh, the state of things is such uh, part one or the what I thought initially that was going to that was going to be the story uh, uh, has uh, has been released in last year's uh, reactor, I think it was in four parts, and uh, as I was uh, closing it, uh, I realized that the sort of uh, denouement and the wrap up and the con contextualization will be focusing way more on the Smith character than it was focusing on the 
uh, on the volunteer fighters and, uh, and volunteer uh, base camp builders that were the center of the uh, of the story so far and so I decided to not to wrap it up in a uh, in a hurry but instead take extra uh, extra word count to uh, to work it all out in a sep in a well not a separate story but a tie-in story so I've been doing that for a few months now the plot is solidifying <laughs> I still have some <laughs> I, I, I still have open bits but right now it's mostly it's mostly filling it all up with proper text I have tons of messy notes I have uh, I have these long strings of uh, fragments smeared out on on pages but now I need to finish it up into or I, I, I need to I need to iterate it now <laughs> the easy part <laughs> yay mm. uh, no worries ah. Yeah. This stuff practically writes oh, itself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so my initial plan was to have something that I can show to the others. Uh, by others, I mean my uh, friends and colleagues in Reactor to have something to show them in January. But then, of course, all the busy kicked in and December doesn't work for brains anyway. So right now, I think. I, I'm lucky if I have something solid to show them in February, but I, I don't know. Uh, it's it's coming together. It is solidifying. I just don't know how how much uh, longer it will take. But uh, unlike with the previous part, I kind of don't want to see realize it anymore because. Uh, I don't think I have much uh, street cred, uh, or I, I I don't think I have much reader goodwill left in that because uh, whenever I serialize uh, things, uh, the endings sort of get away from me. <laughs> so I don't mm. I don't I don't want to put the story up for show until it's uh, almost properly finished at least. But I, I'm gonna have to negotiate that with my editor. So there is that mm. and I have uh, done some preliminary notes uh, in the direction of an English version but it's it's like very early bits uh, mm. the, the plan would be that I take one chapter at a time and then put the English chapters up in the in uh, Casno website but I don't. Yeah. I I don't. I don't even. I don't even know how much uh, when I will have any real time to even look into that. So right now, no promises. But it's. It's it's a goal somewhere out there. Twenty twenty is going to be a good year for the Nova man. Trust. We're all about that. Yeah. Um. I I don't think I have anything else. Uh, mad shout outs to all the people who support Chaos Nova, Claire especially, the translation, the adaptations to Seeker and Chaos Nova, uh, oh, and to Caldevaza. You can find Seeker uh, Italian version if you are so inclined on the website, uh, which can be found in the description below, along with all it our will. other work. And <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, Law's <laughs> going to be on it. And uh, yeah, I think. That's about it. Yep. I think we will wrap this up. Oh, did we say that Cole has released Stilters? Cole Ralph has released Stillwaters, which is also available on Amazon and that sort of stuff. And I will provide you with a link uh, to put in the thing below. Um, we have, so, we yeah. have both read it. It's, uh, it's a... Uh, uh, I think my words were a very British police procedural with yep. lots of with lots of local flavor. So if that is your thing, mm -hmm. check it out. Maybe, maybe we could do a book review video on it at some point. Maybe that could be a thing. I don't know. Help, helping out the indies. Let's we'll see. let's let's discuss it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
So maybe maybe I'll do personal video for my personal channel, ah, possibly. Ah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Compromise. That's, yeah. Okay. Shall we wrap this up? Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Bye.